Um, how do you call to describe your your own kind of music? Because I know in in America they uh, if you call it just blues, it won't sell that much. And if you call it rock and roll, it, it, it has to have a label. But what is the label you mention it? Well, we're falling through the cracks because that's a problem. The blues guys say we're rock, and the rock guys say we're blues, and the jam guys say hey, you can jam, but you're more blues. And so like it's trying to fit into these categories and so I, I i dubbed it bluesadelic jam rock you know to get you know i figured like well that that would cover the bases you know it's, it gives you a little bit i mean there's you know uh there's there's always been blues in my music because the guys that i grew up on always had blues in their music you know when i you know first it was uh the beatles and the stones and the first invasion of british bands you know from the animals to Dave clark five and all that and then the next wave that came i mean when i was a little kid my brother turned me on to the cream when they first came out and, and then jimmy hendrix and jeff beck group and all that stuff and Yardbirds and uh uh you know and then then at that time also mike bloomfield johnny winter and all these guys were talking about well, we got it, you know, you could hear it, like, like I was in the Peter Green of Fleetwood Mac, and you can hear B.B. King and Peter Green's playing. Back then, you could hear Freddie King and Clapton's playing, maybe Albert King and Jimi Hendrix playing. So they all had, you could hear all the influences, and they were all just being, and everybody would come up with their own thing, but you'd kind of hear the influences. So that's what I was raised on, and every now and then, we've done a straighter type of blues thing, but it's always kind of a little bit rocked up because that's where I come from. You Everyone know, so. we interview, and we got a lot of people for the for the microphone. Everybody mentions Rory Gallagher. Oh, he's one of my favorites. And you know something? This is an inside kind of story. I found out recently. Uh, I'm not going to mention who it was, but uh, a very close friend of mine was talking to Eric Clapton. They were talking about different music, and they were talking about the '70s. And it's funny because Eric has always been one of my favorite, but I've never heard Eric talk about Rory Gallagher and this person told me that throughout the 70s that was one of Clapton's favorite players because he felt that Rory was always true to the music he was there was no BS about him he didn't try to whatever was happening was the happening thing he he loved his playing he loved his music because he it was him you know there was no and that's the thing I used to go see him in the 70s and the, actually the last time I saw him was the early 80s I didn't see him after that but um, uh, it was just always such a treat to go see him play I mean and I got his pick one one night at a show on Long Island I went to see him and uh, he was just always one of my favorite players he did he did he play it along for quite a vast time a couple of hours oh, that night yeah well you know what happened we went to, it was a place on long island called my father's place that was the name of the place so we got there and by the time we got there they had oversold the first show he was having two shows so they said look we don't have any more seats for you you can sit at the bar and for the second show you can have any seat you want so i did that and my brother and his girlfriend and i came with them they they were my ride and they said, well, we're not staying for the late show. And I said, I'm staying for the late show. So I, I, I stayed. I got all the way up. I sat right in front of the stage. And he played, uh, I don't know, the second set was longer, maybe about three hours, two and a half hours, three hours. And that's when I got his pick. And um, the place wouldn't let him go. I mean, he did two encores, and they were just going, they were just going wild. And it was, uh, it, was, it was probably my favorite time of seeing him. And then I had to find the ride home. I had to hitch a ride home that night. But it, but it was well worth it. Well worth it. It would be nice if it, we could do it in a little bit more, you know, a little more luxury, maybe, you know, because we don't have a road crew with us. You know, we're trying to get it a couple of levels ahead where everybody could make a little bit more money, where we could bring a couple of guys as a road crew and, and do it a little bit more comfortably. But being in a van or a bus with the guys is, is you know, it's good. It's good. And and, and, and Suavik has been with me for, for a couple of years. And now we have a new drummer, Roger Voss. And he's been great. And, you know, it really, when you got the right combination of guys, not only musically, but when you can all get along, and, and it's, you know, becomes it becomes a lot easier to travel that way. I miss home. I miss my family. And right now there's stuff going on at home that, you know, I should probably be there for. But, uh, you know, the guys that you're out there with, and there's there's 
basically four of us. There's Ralph Neumann, you know, our, our, our tour manager. So it's the four of us, and sometimes, sometimes, sometimes one or two other people travel. But that's your support group out there. That's your family out there. So uh, when you're with the right guys, it makes traveling much the easier. First, much as better. far as is, is my goal is number one to be a, a better singer songwriter. That's positively number one. Uh, number two, I'd like to be a better guitar player. I mean, you can always you can always be better, but um, I, I'm I'm more concerned of leaving some music behind that people will go, that's a great song, or that's you know, and somebody will do that song years from now. And I'd like to, I know I have a long way. I'm a, I'm still a work in progress, as far as where this whole thing goes. Because that's me as an individual, as far as the Todd Wolf Band or Wolf Band or whatever it is. I'd like to get, especially now that we have this lineup of guys that we get along and everything, that would be nicer if we can get more people out to the shows, slightly bigger venues. The size doesn't matter as much as making sure the venues are always filled with people and people can make a living from it. So our tour manager, all the work that he puts into it, he can feel that he gets a good payday. The guys feel like they get a good payday. The promoters and clubs feel like that they made a good pay. I, I, you know, that's that's the ultimate thing, I think, to make everybody happy. I don't need to be in a big arena. I mean, a big club is great. If I could if I could tour the world, you know, take off a couple of months a year, and then 10 months of the year, besides being local, come overseas, and maybe my band, we haven't been to, to Asia yet, we haven't been to the Pacific, you know, it'd be nice to be able to do that, to be able to come to Europe every year, to be able to fill... 10 months of, of shows even locally or abroad and then have a couple of months off a year and where everybody can make a living doing that I that's a goal the initial problem with blues in america is i think that they're not as open as the europeans are i think they they try to categorize everything like when we were saying you know the blues guys say that's not blues and you know and when we were growing up it was all good you know you would have a as a matter of fact, one of the greatest bills ever on the Fillmore West was Albert King, the John Mayall band with Mick Taylor playing lead. And that night, Cream was in town and Eric Clapton was off that night. So Eric Clapton joined the John Mayall band. So it was John Mayall, it was, it was Mick Taylor and Clapton playing with John Mayall. And then the closing act was Jimi Hendrix. And it all worked. You had shows where Miles Davis was playing with Jimi Hendrix. I mean, I, I don't think it should really... You know, I don't, I don't understand how people come to a show and they go like, ah, that, well, that's more rock. I mean, if it's good, it's good. I mean, I, I mean, if you don't like it, you don't like it. But I'm saying it should be, I know I always liked three on a bill. That, that's another thing that's do gone by the wayside, where I think it's really great when you can go to a show and one band plays 30, 40, or 45 minutes, the next band plays an hour, and then the final band closes the show and you get to see three bands. It's exciting to me as a, as a fan. So I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see where, even if it's a blues festival, if somebody's influenced by the blues and, and it's an obvious influence, he doesn't necessarily have to play blues or wear a, a hat or look like the Blues Brothers or, or, or whatever it is. You know, there should be no, if he wants to come out with flowered shirts and, and, and ribbons tied around his leg, let him, you know, whatever, whatever, as long as it's good music, it's good music. It shouldn't have to be categorized or fit into that compartment. I think sometimes the blues societies in America do that as well. They pigeonhole it, and then they wonder why they're not getting a larger audiences. Why, how, how come the kids aren't coming? Well, because you want them to see just this specific type of blues. Maybe if you, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe if you introduce them to Joe Bonamassa or, or, or Sonny Landreth, and that's, Joe Bonamassa and Sonny Landreth are not straight blues, but, there's blues content and what they do, even Derek Trucks. D Derek Trucks is a very world kind of music, like it'll go from a Pakistani musical song, but there'll be blues and it's playing. And, it's, and the, when the kids see that, I see the kids at those concerts and they like it. So I think the blues audience and the, the, the blues people that control these societies or these specific sh blues shows should embrace all of it and make it like, let's get everybody down here let's 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 turn it you know and that's how I got into it if it wasn't for the cream and Mike Bloomfield and Johnny Winter or Rory Gallagher or Peter Green you know I, I might not have gone back and really besides BB King I wouldn't have maybe got into Freddie King or Lightning Hopkins or you know or, or Robert Johnson or whoever Skip James you know I mean all of that is because of those guys so you know that's why Joe but